comrades, uh, like Siobhan, um, Siobhan was in a personal capacity. I'm in a similar capacity here today, in a political capacity, uh, trying to tell people the reasons why, if their delegations ain't already voting to support the POA resolution number five, then they should do. The reason they should do... Is that better? Yeah. 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 Well, we get to know me now, I'll start eating it, I'll end up lunch. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, the necessity to support resolution number five is the most crucial resolution, in my opinion, uh, in the last 20 years. The reality is this, brothers and sisters, is that people will tell you that the resolution that comes up from the POA, which the RMT will be seconding, is that uh, on one hand, well, it doesn't really mean much, it only means consider, and other people will say it's a nonsense. The reality is this, brothers and sisters, this is a class attack against working men and working women. I'm not really bothered, these people who say, well, can we have a ballot, is it legal, is it not legal? The reality is, is it right or is it wrong? Yeah. 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 The TUC heading for the document, a future that works. This is a future that works for Osborne and for Cameron and McLean. The future they want is mass unemployment, coupled with anti-trade union laws. And people better recognise the fact as well. There's no good just criticising Labour and the Tories. Tories and Liberals. They need to turn around and say, what's Labour the alternative to these policies? Because mm -hmm. I hear it from... <laughs> I hear him today saying that, really, we need action now. We need action now. And what we really should be doing is linking up, if need be, with the Liberals and Tories, of having policies that support working people. We need action now from Labour if they really want to couple working class support and harness working class support and say that when action's called, whether it be by any union defending its members' terms and conditions or defending the community, we need your complete support when we're doing it. No ifs and buts. What we're seeing, brothers and sisters, is this. We've had a fantastic demonstration on March the 26th, which was probably the biggest trade union march when you look at the density of trade union membership now. Millions on the streets from a trade union press, from the media, who said that the trade union movement was dead. But I tell you what, like the rest of you, there was loads of lively corpses walking around London <laughs> on March the 26th. And the fact is we're not dead. And this march on October the 20th should also be equal for its demonstration that's taking place in London and in Glasgow and in Belfast. But the reality is this, brothers and sisters, you all work in different fields of trade union activity and you will know that when you reach a policy, you go to the employer and you try and negotiate that policy. And if you get an agreement, that's fine if the members want to accept it. But when the bosses say no, that you're not having what the policy is, what you're asking for, you've got two options. You can sit on your knees, or you can stand up and fight. The reality is this. These cuts that are taking place are wrong, they're morally wrong, and demonstrations are fantastic for raising the consciousness. But we can march and march and march. It ain't going to stop austerity. The only thing they know is economic austerity from workers by stopping work and saying that we're not going to have a society. <laughs> By the way, I was suspended to see. I wasn't on my knees, I was standing up last Thursday to General Council, I wasn't even there. I was in Scotland where our members are having their pensions been trying to take it away from them by Caledonia McBrain. And we've got half a victory up there already. It wasn't done through sending postcards to MPs. It was on the threat of a ballot result on Tuesday, which is going to be a massive yes vote by our members in Caledonia McBrain, that the First Minister stood up ten minutes before we walked in to the chambers and said, he's now not going to break up Caledonia McBrain, and then mentioned, it's got nothing to do with strike action. We never mentioned it. Remember that ballot result yet? So even without a better result, these people make concessions. And of course they will use arguments. And I want to make it absolutely clear. 
I don't deal from the bottom of the pack. I deal from the top of the pack. And I ain't going to try and win a resolution over by people by saying, we only want you to consider a general strike. We're making it clear as far as we're concerned, it's the only option in the general strike. We can look at the practicalities, and we can look at the reasons why, yes and why no. Professor John Hendy and Professor Keith Ewing make the case that you can have action. And the point is you can always put an art sally up if you don't really want to do nothing. There's always those negative people out there that say you can't do this and you can't do that. You know, people are scared out there. We're in a big room here today with five, six hundred people, which gives us all strength. And there are people like sex. They're on their own, in particular workplaces, working on their own, they ain't got that same confidence. And fear is contagious. But the one thing more contagious than fear is courage. And we've got two options, brothers, to those negative people out there that say we can't do nothing. You can sit and be attacked and say that's wrong in that industry and they're coming for us. And it's wrong in that industry and they're coming for us. They can slice our pay, cut, cut, attack our communities, or you can get off your knees and you can fight. And my situation and my union's position is absolutely clear on Tuesday. And we've been saying it not from the bottom of the pack. When we want the General Council to consider Resolution 5, which in my view will be passed, it's not just to consider it and dump it, but to name